Hi everyone. So in the previous video we discussed the uh, concept of expansion work which remember is a work that's done by uh, usually a collection of gases uh, when it's expanding but it's also uh, we're also talking about the same type of work when we compress a gas so if the gas starts with the bigger volume and goes to a smaller volume and we basically have a compression type of situation happening we use the same equation which is the equation shown here negative P external times delta V to solve the uh, to calculate the amount of work that's generated by that um, <clears throat> situation okay um, so I'm going to do a couple of examples in this um, video, but before I do that, let me just kind of illustrate a couple of situations where expansion works happen. So for example, here's um, an example of expansion work. If you have uh, zinc uh, being placed into a flask that contains hydrochloric acid, HCl, we have a reaction that happens here which uh, generates uh, the zinc uh, ion and then hydrogen gas. Now, if you look at this reaction right here at the bottom, you can see that this is the net ionic equation. And you can see that overall, what you get is you get a gas being generated, whereas prior to that, you have no gas here, right? So then we expect volume to increase because you have more gas in the product than you do in the reactant. So the volume will increase because of that hydrogen gas production. And the volume increase can be measured by a piston. So if you connect this reaction flask to a movable piston. This is the initial uh, level of the piston and this is the final level of the piston. So if you calculate that height, you multiply it with the surface area, you get the volume increase. Okay, So this is a, a, an example of an expansion work. Okay, It's an example of um, uh, gas being generated, pushing up on top of this uh, movable piston, working against the external pressure, which is in this case probably atmospheric pressure. Uh, another situation, of course, your car engine. You think about your car engine, uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, you're really, in, the, in that case, you're, you're burning gasoline. And when you burn gasoline or you combust gasoline, you produce CO2 and H2O, and those both are gases. And as we showed in the previous video, the stoichiometry is such that you produce more gases than you consume. So as a result, you have an expansion happening. So when that expansion happens, um, so you start the reaction by, um, you know, uh, starting your engine, which, uh, at which point there's a firing event happening, and that gets the combustion reaction to start. When it starts, then it starts to push down uh, on these um, uh, levers that are connected to the um, combustion apparatus, and as a result, that moves your car. And this cycle keeps going and going and going until one of the two reactants got consumed. So either the gasoline is consumed or the oxygen is consumed. But the oxygen is provided from air, and we assume that there's unlimited amount of air available to the car, but usually it's the gasoline component that runs out, right? So that's why we uh, at some point have to refill the gasoline because the reactant is running out, okay? All right, so let's do a, an example here on uh, uh, expansion work. And I'm going to go through a couple of examples. The first one is shown right here. Uh, again, this is a perfect time for you to stop the video, read the question yourself, and try to solve it. Remember that the uh, equation of importance to us is the expansion work equation, but we also have the equation with delta E equals Q plus W. So there's basically a couple of things you want to keep in mind and see which uh, situation this might apply to. So in this problem, it says you have one mole of H2O uh, at one atmosphere, and it and at 100 degrees, so that gas, that H2O gas, occupies a certain amount of volume, 30.6 liter. Um, and what happens then is there's a condensation of the gas to liquid forms. So in other words, that whole gas is converted into liquid at the same pressure and temperature. So this is basically your, um, you know, your condensation of, of vapor to liquid. And it tells you that during that condensation, you release this much heat from the system. And then it tells you that if the density of H2O uh, at this temperature and pressure is this value, what's delta E for the condensation of one mole of water? Now, when you're solving problems, uh, as I've illustrated a few times in class, one of the things you want to do is kind of, you know, illustrate what the problem is. In other words, kind of, uh, you know, have, a, have an image in your head, visualize what the situation is. You can do this either by thinking about it, 
in your head and imagining what's going on or you can draw it out okay so if you're comfortable with drawing it out you can draw it out so in this case if we look at this situation right here okay I'm just gonna bring it here to our my scratch paper you imagine what's going on is the following basically you have a container that initially is all gas right so this is all gas here okay all gaseous water and there's a condensation that happens and so condensation and as a result of the condensation now you have that same container but then what happens is of course these all these gases become liquid so maybe you only have you have a puddle here at the end a puddle of liquid it's the same substance though now but all of those gases now become liquid okay so that's the condensation event now you notice that what's going on of course between these two hopefully if you think about this you can see that the volume initially is the volume of the gas okay that's the initial volume and that was given it was 30.6 liter and then at this point now what you have in the um, container is just the liquid so your volume of the liquid is something now that's not something we can uh, you know that that's not something we're given but we can calculate it as you'll see in a second but we need that because the question asks for delta E If you think about delta E as I said before we can calculate delta e if we know Q plus W. Uh, in the question, Q is given. If you look back at the question, it says that heat, okay, here's the question, it says that 40.66 kilojoules of heat is released. So in other words, we're given Q. So Q in this case is um, negative 40.66 kilojoule because it's released, we know it's negative. That's why I put the negative right there. And then it's the work that we have to calculate. Now we know that work is equal to negative P uh, external, okay, times uh, delta V, right? So it's negative P external times delta V. Now the question is, what is P external? Well, the the uh, reaction or this condensation occurs at one atmosphere, so that's your P external. The question then is, what is delta V? Well, we know that delta V is final volume minus initial volume. Here's the final volume, it's the volume of the liquid. Here's the initial volume, it's the volume of the gas. So if we can calculate the volume of the liquid, then we can solve this problem because that allows us to calculate W, which then allows us to calculate delta E. Uh, the question is how do we calculate the volume of the liquid? Well, we uh, are not given the volume of the liquid, but we were given density. So as soon as you see density, you should think about, well, density would give me, I can relate density to volume if I uh, have mass right so volume is just equal to mass over density but the mass is not given in this problem however we were told that there is one mole of water now if there's one mole of water that means that uh, I can figure out the mass because one mole if I multiply the number of moles times the molar mass and then I divide that by my density this is my mass okay so that basically is the way you solve the problem. You plug in the number for a number of moles, molar mass of water, density, you get the volume. That volume is the volume of the liquid. Then you, that allows you to calculate the, the W, the work. And then when you plug in that work back here with the heat, then you get your delta E. Okay. So I'm just going to write down some numbers here, which is the uh, answer to this uh, question. So okay so you plug in that uh, number of moles and molar mass and the density that's provided which is all these numbers here one mole 18 grams per mole and 0.996 grams per milliliter you get this volume 0.01807 liter which uh, makes sense because we expect the liquid to have a much smaller volume than the gas right and then so then you plug the uh, volume to the work equation so you say that it's negative p external times delta v uh, p external is one atmosphere the final volume is the volume of the liquid, the initial volume is the volume of the gas, and you notice what happens here is I put the negative sign in there because that's part of the equation. So you have to include that as part of the equation. And when you do that, you calculate the value to be 30.582 liter atmosphere. Okay? Now, this is a, a unit of energy. It might not be immediately clear to you, but this is actually a unit of energy but it's not the kind of unit that we're used to so what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert it to the unit that we're used to which is joule 
And the conversion factor is just the gas constant, the two forms of gas constant that we had before. So if you remember that you can basically, you remember that one gas constant has unit of liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin and the other gas constant has unit of joules per mole Kelvin and in this case this is 8.314 and this is 0 0.0821 and you notice that in this case the mole Kelvin units cancel in both gas constants leaving you with joules over liter atmosphere so that's basically a conversion factor from liter atmosphere to joule now in this case I'm going to cancel this out with here and then what I'm going to get at the end is the uh, work in units of joule so it'd be plus 3.09 and I'm actually converting it directly to kilojoule so it's plus 3.09 kilojoule okay make sure that you have a, a point here because there's actually a there's actually a dot there okay so it's 3.09 kilojoule now I'm not done yet because remember that I have to calculate delta E which is Q plus W so the Q itself is negative 40.66 now I'm gonna add the W that I just calculated to the Q so um, the W that I just calculated is positive 3.09 kilojoule so when I add these two numbers together I get my delta E and my delta E in this case should be negative 37.56 kilojoule okay so that's the actual delta E of my um, uh, system in this case the, con uh, the, the condensation of water of the gas in this case